てほんにゃらごっこポリポリ」「ふつうのひとなら目に出ちゃうよニヤニヤ」「And there, third name down」This is Karyage Kun, a 1989 comedy series about a man called Karyage getting into trouble at work. It's also one of Yutaka Nakamura's first opportunities as an animator. Let's see what he's up to now. I've mentioned Nakamura several times in the past, mostly in relation to his work on Concrete Revolution and his sneaky trip over to One Punch Man, where he went under the name of Yotaro Takahashi. Nakamura's presence on the show is always a good thing, providing some of the most detailed and fluid action animation. His work always breaks the barriers of what is regarded to be good animation, taking things one step further in this unending competition with himself. He's a superhero of animation, doing what others can't, and like all superheroes, he has an origin story. Graduating from Yorogi Animation School, the largest animation school in Japan, Nekimura immediately went to work for a studio known as Ad Cosmo, a studio that did subcontracted work for both Toei Animation and Sunrise at the time. Ad Cosmo is actually still around, they just renamed themselves to Studio Cosmo in 2010, and it was through Cosmo that Nakamura started getting work with these studios, one of his first being 11 episodes of Karyaga kun. However, despite how incredible Karyaga kun is, Nakamura got his chance to really shine with Mobile Suit G Gundam in 1994. It was around this time that he was working on a lot of mecha, and it was fellow animator Shinya Hasegawa who brought him on to Neon Genesis Evangelion, where they got their first chance to work together. With Hasegawa as animation director and Nakamura as the key animator, he produced this incredible cut showing Shinji and Asuka working together to take down an angel. This relationship continued when Nakamura was brought onto Hasekawa's episode of Revolutionary Girl Utena two years later. It's around this time when we can clearly see that people were impressed with Nakamura, and no longer was he being brought onto shows like Karyage kun, because the show that really showed what he was capable of was Cowboy Bebop. With back and forth realistic action based on Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do fighting style, Nakamura remarks that even he was impressed with his work on the show. And that's probably the normal reaction after providing incredible cuts for 12 of the 24 episodes. However, during production of Cowboy Bebop, things were stirring and several members of Sunrise wanted to do more than so much of the mecha that the studio had become known for and wanted the opportunity to work on some more creative projects. So, just months after Cowboy Bebop aired, the show's character designer and animation director Toshihiro Kawamoto, along with animator Hiroshi Asaka and producer Masahiko Minami, left to create Studio Bones with Minami as president. With many of the core staff of Bebop now at Bones and Bandai wanting to capitalize on the series' success after Watanabe prevented a sequel through spoilery means, Bones was brought in to produce a film. And so, who do they bring on to animate it? Well, that guy who worked on 12 episodes, of course. Nakamura's work on Cowboy Bebop the movie is still regarded to be some of his best, with an incredible amount of detail with low angle framing and realistic choreography. It's exceptional work, and a few years later, he was brought into Studio Bones under contract, meaning that everything that he does is for Bones, and his place within the studio has given him numerous opportunities to develop exceptional cuts. And that bit about Bones producers wanting to produce more creative projects wasn't just PR either. Here's a quote from Yutaka Nakamura himself Being at Bones, surprisingly, you could do what you want to do. If you think, I don't want to do this work anymore, you'd do something else. For instance, having to draw a character's action that I've never drawn before, or having to draw a wolf's, without realizing it, it ends up becoming your job of preference. Minami san always said, You'd be good at stuff like this, and he always seemed to understand that about me. It felt like a gift to have the desire to do something and be able to. <laughs> 
Bones president Masahiko Minami wasn't interested in getting people to do the same work over and over again, and from that quote, it definitely seems like he was pushing for Nakamura to try new things that he thought he'd be good at, rather than having him do the same work all the time. However, in between Nakamura being brought onto Cowboy Bebop the movie, and him being brought onto Bones, he did one last cut at Sunrise, for a show called Overman King Gaina, directed by Gundam creator Yoshiyuki Tomino, that's definitely worth mentioning. Now I'll show you what my Dominator can do! This was the first appearance of what is now known as the Utapon Cube, a form of animated destruction involving cube-like debris, and as time's gone on, we've seen more and more of this work from him in Studio Bones projects, and it's such a brilliant and flashy way to show destruction that the style has been adopted by many other animators in the industry, including Shingo Yamashita on Naruto, Takahiro Shikama on Garo the Animation and Star Driver, and even Korean animators to In Sung Choi for The Legend of Korra. Nakamura is an influential animator, and one of the works that so many other animators call back to is his undefeatable work on Sword of the Stranger in 2007. Being a two minute cut of uninterrupted swordplay, every motion here is an example of cinematic genius. When Nashi flips over Lor Lang, their swords collide and the shot changes seamlessly. With storyboards by director Masahiro Ando, this fight calls back to their previous work together on episode 50 of Full Metal Alchemist in the battle with Envy. It's just a phenomenal cut and it surpasses any standard for fight choreography as well as fight animation, securing Yutaka Nakamura's place as one of the greatest action animators of all time. However, we mentioned before that Minami was always on board with Nakamura's attempts to try new things and as the years went on, he did exactly that. There's a brilliant panel that I've linked in the description at Anime Central in 2013 all about Sakuga. In it, Colin refers to Nakamura as the Grandmaster Battle Animator, and judging from what we've just seen, that's more than a fitting title. But just a year or so after the panel, we started to see some of his brand new stuff. Whether it's character acting, effects animation, dancing, or whatever the hell this is, Nakamura surpasses the term Grandmaster Battle Animator in the hopes of us being able to find an even cooler title. His most recent cut was on Concrete Revolution Season 2, and after almost 30 years of animation, he's still innovating. This is an impact frame. They're used to add impact to a shot through clever timing and an attention to detail. In my One Punch Man video, I talked about how Nakamura's cut featured an immense amount of impact frames, with the entire sequence featuring 18 of them. However, this cut in Conrevo takes impact frames to a new level, incorporating them into the actual animation in a new way. The animation of Juro unleashing his power is entirely composed of what would be impact frames, even setting up the next shot of him sliding forwards. Then, when the attack is made, he not only bursts into flames, he bursts into an impact frame. A fire made of the same style that he uses for impact frames. You just don't see anyone do that. That's a specific style used to complement action, and Nakamura has just broken the rules and used it for the animation itself. And it works! Not only does it work, but it's incredible! Yutaka Nakamura isn't an animator defined by his past, but rather someone who's constantly reinventing himself, trying new things and succeeding at every one of them. Whether it's realism or expressionism, dancing or fighting, cubes or beams, Nakamura is one of the best animation has to offer. There's a link to a list of his works in the description, and keep your eyes peeled for whatever he chooses to work on next. Thanks for watching The Canopy Effect, and a huge thank you to 5 Foot Tanuki and FireRocket888 on Twitter for helping me out with translation. Also, Fierce Alchemist on Reddit recently started doing best animation of the week threads. You can find them and stay up to date through r slash anime sakuga.